Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome guys. I have something very interesting I want to share with you on this issue of apostasy law. And I believe maybe we are missing a point here. Maybe we are missing something. So I'm going to be showing you this hadith. It's a very popular hadith quoted in many different uh, hadith literature about the permissibility of killing apostates. Okay, so this is what usually the other side will say. But I want you to pay attention to this. What if, what if, just think with me here. So let's just read the hadith first. So Abdullah ibn Mas'ud reported that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was saying, the blood of a Muslim man who testifies that there is no God but Allah and that I am the messenger of Allah should not be lawfully shed, but only for only three reasons. The first one, marry fornicator, that's adulterer. Second one, soul for your soul, someone a murderer. And one that who deserts his religion, separating himself from the community. So this is hadith that they will use that. Okay, you see, whoever deserts his religion and uh, is an apostate, therefore we can kill the apostate, apostate lawfully. Now, we're going to go over the hadith again. I want you to follow, follow. Let's read it again. Okay, let's read it again. Maybe we are missing something. Okay, so here's what I want you to say. Okay, so the first part says, the blood of a Muslim man. And if you look at this, it says, La yahillu dammu rajulin, muslimin, rajulin, a man, okay? So maybe this is where the Hanafis got their own, that only men can be killed, not women. Maybe this is where they got it from, I don't know. But you can see, say rajulin, muslim man, okay? Now, uh, and then he says, la, okay, so, so the first argument is this. Some people have said, look at the phraseology of the last part of this the, the condition, the three conditions. It says, the married fornicator, the soul for your soul, okay, and the one who deserts his religion and separating himself from the community. So some people have said, what if he doesn't separate himself from the community? Even though he deserts his religion, but he doesn't separate himself from the community. Some people have argued that. Therefore, this is showing us that there's more to apostasy than just living, changing your religion. There has to be an act of desertion or some act of leaving the community. In, and this is where some people bring the context of work. But I'm not even going to go that. What I'm going to show you here, guys, is not even related to this. I'm going to show you something very interesting that everyone might be missing. Okay. So, but this one is a very strong argument that many scholars have made that this last condition shows that uh, who deserts his religion, separating himself from the community. That means you must have given bayah and then you violate bayah. Or something like that or oh, you, you get like it has to be something related to that but anyway now let me show you let me show you what i discovered i just thought about it right now okay and then i wanted to share it with you let's go over the verse again at the hadith again Ab abdullah ibn masood reported that the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam as saying the blood of a muslim man who testifies that there's no god but allah and that i am his messenger Whose blood is being talked about here? A Muslim person, a Muslim man that believes in Allah and his messenger. This is the blood of the person that we are talking about here. Now, when the three conditions are given, the adulterer, the married fornicator is not a kafir. Okay, so a married fornicator that his blood is legally shed is not a kafir. Okay, but on based on law, on legal law, his blood can be shed, even though he's a Muslim. The one who kills another person, soul for your soul, is a Muslim man that believes in Allah and his messenger. Okay? And yet his blood can be shed. What I found is that, and okay, of course the last one too, the one who deserts his religion and uh, separating from the community. My point is that, what if this hadith is really talking about someone that is a Muslim and then he deserts his religion and his community? His blood can be shed also because the two examples that were given in the first place, it didn't make the person a kafir necessarily. Uh, it didn't make the person a kafir, of course. Why is the last one now going to make him a kafir? What I'm saying is that my whole argument before was that this apostasy thing, killing apostasy thing, is for desertion, for perfidy, perjury, breaking the bayah. So when Abu Bakr or a very good example, when after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi died and those people refused to pay zakah and they want to be collecting the zakah, he went and he fought against them. He fought against those people, not because they say they are kufar, 
No, not necessarily. It's because they are saying that they will not pay the zakah, which means that they are doubting the authority of Abu Bakr, of the caliph. They are not going to give, they broke their bear or something similar. So he fought against them and many people died. And they are Muslims dying. They are Muslims. Don't say they are kufar. They are not kufar. They are Muslims. They just say they will not pay zakah. They will not acknowledge. They will not give bayah or something similar to that. So me, I think, and their blood was shed. So if they were, uh, what's it called? Uh, and many wars happened in Muslim land anyway. Like the, between the Sahabas and the companions fighting and killing each other, Muslims. They knew that this other side is a Muslim. And yet they fought and killed each other. Based on the fact that if, if we were to use the hadith, are they not spilling Muslim blood? Is there any condition here that says that that is allowed? You see, the only one that it can be is for what's it called? It deserves. So <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Maybe this hadith, read it again. There. Now, after you've understood this, now read it again. The blood of a Muslim man is even explaining who is this Muslim man? The one that believes in Allah and his messenger. So this person is a Muslim. So what I'm saying is that in these three cases, these three cases, is they are talking about a Muslim, a Muslim that his blood can be shed legally by law because he has violated the law. What law has he violated? Fornication, uh, adultery. He has murdered somebody else, and he has deserted his religion, separating himself from the community because that is a break of. Uh, is this sedition? I don't know which. There's a term for it. Treason. This is where this is the context that we we are bringing. That is not just for changing your religion. That that's because it, that's why you are being killed. No, it doesn't have to be because you change your religion. And many more. I'll bring more videos for you guys. I have many videos I'm going to give you coming up. Inshallah, I will give you, for instance, the case of the five minutes I posted about someone after five minutes he, he uh, after declaring himself a Muslim. After five minutes he, he changed. What should be is a rule under your own understanding of Islam uh, that apostates should be killed. So I will explain to you why. The one that we were explaining, the case of not just because it changed religion, but because of legal law of bay'ah, allegiance, or something related to that. That's why the person has been killed, not for the change in religion itself. You see? So, what do you guys think about this argument? Let me, let, uh, let me know what you think about it in the comment section. See you guys later. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.